Hello, everybody. So this is a conversation uh, with uh, Lauren Barker from, um, from the brand of Digital Design Team. And what we're going to be talking about today is the work that we're doing on the www.gitlab.com repo. Uh, for most people, you know, that would either be the handbook or the marketing site. So essentially, if you go to about.gitlab.com, whatever you see on that domain is in that repo. And over the last few months, uh, I would say probably in earnest from about January, February this year, we've we've made a lot of changes to that repository. Um, they, there's going to be a continued amount of, uh, you know, big amount of changes going forward. The marketing team is is uh, in the process of uh, looking at the new tech stack and and uh, redesign and all of those things. So. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what has changed, why it's changed, and how you know things might uh, evolve further in, in the future. So I'll start off by by quickly summarizing that the static side editor team, um, our our main reason for existing is to facilitate a easy contribution experience for for users of static sites. Um, GitLab is a 1,300 uh, person plus um, organization, and only a portion of, of, of those uh, team members are, are engineers. And so not everybody has an understanding of Markdown, of Git, of and local development environments. And, and so contributing to the handbook is, is sometimes, um, you know, it, there's a high barrier for them. That they have to uh, overcome. Most, a lot of them will join GitLab not never having used Git or Terminal even before, and so this this can be quite daunting. And so, the three pillars that the static site editor really focuses on is around, you know, not requiring people to to have to understand Git as well um, as not needing to run a local environment, and also not to have to understand Markdown. Now. How this all kind of like lands you know, into the handbook project is the handbook is a static site as part of the overall marketing you know, uh, website uh, on about.gitlab.com. And we, we have team members who need to contribute to that. And a lot of, a lot of the challenges we had upfront with, with the website was, was around the fact that uh, a, people didn't necessarily always understand how to do it, but also we had slow yeah. pipelines. I think there was talks at times of pipelines taking 30 minutes to, to uh, deploy a change. Over, um, over an yeah. hour sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so, so, and that was quite frustrating if somebody just wanted to fix a spelling mistake, you know, and, and to wait uh, an hour for that to go live. And, and as GitLab scaled, um, last year we grew from, say, 400 plus to 2,200, and that, that's, you know, the, the amount of contributions to the site is just kind of like exponentially increased. And so we went on this journey to, to identify what is it that we can do to improve the pipeline performance. And with that, you know, that repository has been, was started seven years ago, seven plus years ago. And, and so it's accumulated a lot of uh, contributions over time. And, um, you know, there was there was some tech debt that had to be worked with as well, and so you know, the project never really had any you know, specific team that was that was earning it, and and so as the as the team that was you know, primarily formed to you know, enable easy editing of of content in the handbook, uh, it fell on us to also take care of the technical aspects, and and obviously you know, the marketing website team, Lauren and Brandon, etc. Are working in there every day as well, and so uh, you know, we, we partnered with them early on in this uh, in this journey and to to help us with this, and and so we we eventually, after a lot of kind of like conversations, around what can we do to make things faster and and more stable? Uh, you know, we also have this 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 uh, problem where somebody might make a change in the handbook that breaks the site and now you know no, nobody can deploy a blog post um something like that and so the the site became very big and interconnected and and so we need to do very interconnected <laughs> very interconnected yes yeah and so 
originally we thought, okay, you know, maybe we need to move the handbook out of the repository into its own repo. And we soon realized that that's a, a lot easier said than done. Um, <laughs> we're, we're seven months down the line and we still haven't achieved the, the ability to mm -hmm. just move the handbook out. Um, and I started off so, trying to move the blog to its own repository <laughs> and quickly found yes. the same, same thing. <laughs> and, and so after a lot of conversation, mainly between Chad, myself and Lauren, we, we came up with this proposal to move to a mono repo structure where we would have a single repository with multiple sites, loosely coupled um, as far as possible, uh, separated from each other, sharing templates and, and assets. So, um, and and we, we spent a couple of months migrating to that structure. We're there right now. We, we've got a marketing website, and uh, a handbook website in the in the repo um, and they're the only thing they share right now still is is static assets css javascript um, they share some partials uh, and templates and data files and so and some helpers we, some customers and some helpers yes. helpers some and generators yeah exactly yeah so we we did that primarily to to allow us, so so part of part of this moving to a monorepo approach, the, there was two principles that guided that the decision. The first one was a principle of separation. So separating the code, right, you know, um, the handbook and the marketing code, uh, purely because we, we realized our paths were diverging. Uh, you know, marketing needed had, had have specific needs that that doesn't necessarily um, correlate with the handbook's needs, as well as um, just clear ownership as well. You know, if there's a if there's a, a file here, who who needs to own it? Who needs to work on it? If there's a file there, and so se separating the two the, the two sides uh, was important from the, from that point of view. We have two teams working on it, and um, we, you know, a lot of people uh, team members at GitLab even refers to the about a GitLab.com site as the handbook, and or you know they they don't differentiate between the fact that there's the handbook is actually a separate site from from the marketing site. So we went on this journey to create separation, which will uh, assist in maintenance and, and accountability and, and ownership. Then the, the second principle was isolation. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, sometimes somebody would make a change to the handbook, which breaks the pipelines and all of a sudden you can't deploy a blog. Um, so what, and, and this is, we've pretty much gotten close to, to solving the, se the separation uh, part of it, the isolation we haven't really achieved uh, yet, where we want to be able to have independent pipelines for the handbook and the marketing site. So if you make a change- Parent-child pipelines. <laughs> yes, parent-child <laughs> pipelines. Uh, so if you make a change to the marketing site, it has a pipeline dedicated for those changes. It builds just the marketing site and it, and it deploys that. And, and we've made, Lots of progress to that. Now, there's various reasons why that has been tricky. The fact that our our website is is uh, essentially static files in a, in, a, in a GCP bucket and fronted by a CDN, and so you know all these files are, are there together. And um, you know, so keeping them in sync, especially if you have two different sites, two different deploy processes, it's a challenge. And so we've made a lot of progress, mostly behind the scenes. You know, like. If you look at the site now, it looks like it's one site. If you go to about that, you'd let .com, you wouldn't necessarily know where the, that the marketing and the handbook sites are two separate sites in, in, in the source code. And that, and that was by design. Now, we, we, the reason we want to go further with the, the isolation is it will also have a big uh, impact on the, the pipeline speed. So. Imagine if, you, if you're if pub you publishing a blog post and you don't have to build the handbook, you save time. If you're making a handbook update and you don't have to build the blog or the marketing site, you save time. And so having these two things separate uh, is really important, both from a, just from a team member's user experience of contributing to these sites, as well as you know, um, isolating uh, potential interruptions from, from both sites. Now, that in a nutshell explains why we went the way we went, and, and more or less where we are right now. Lauren, is there anything you can think of that we should cover uh, with regards to where we are right now and how we got um, there? I think it's gone really smooth. 
I think there's been a really uh, noticeable increase in the speed of our pipelines and the health of our repository um, has increased. It's yeah. easier to work um, with. Yeah. Yes, and so I think if we if we talk about looking at where we're going from here, um, long term the handbook uh, and and this is unofficial. It hasn't been approved. I'm, I'm actually due to create a, an issue to to open discussion about this. But you know, part of part of the, the static site editor group's uh, strategic direction is is being closely aligned with GitLab Pages, which you know, is a hosting uh, environment for static uh, sites. And so there's a desire to move the handbook onto GitLab Pages over time. And to achieve that, it will just be so much easier if we have our own separate repo for that. Now, there's a lot of work to do before we can even get to consider moving the handbook into its own repo. We're still sharing data files. We're still sharing um, assets and so on. You know, in the short term, we're going to also look to, to migrate from middleman to frontman as our static side generator from the handbook, uh, largely for performance reasons. And to really achieve that, we need to have clean separation between the marketing and the handbook site. And so we need to go about um, the next steps of, you know, how do we break apart the, the fact that we're sharing templates and, and, and styles and JavaScript? Are we okay to diverge and have duplication? And I think based you know, considering where we are and, and the journey that the marketing site is going to take with with uh, introducing a CMS as well as um, going through a rebranding exercise, um, there's there's likely going to be big deviation in, in the short term anyway. And so um, we made the the kind of like high level decision that yes, it's okay for us to to break apart and and duplicate code that needs to be duplicated for the various sites because it's likely going to going to separate uh, and, and change drastically anyway. We we want what we want to do from the homebook side is is stay as closely aligned to the uh, the brand guidelines and the brand styling as possible. And so, you know, we, we've spoken about a, a design system that the marketing site will use and, and how the handbook can leverage that going forward. Um, it doesn't have to evolve with the evolution of the marketing site, but, we, you know, after the fact, we definitely want to make sure we align with those. Um, and so the the big question that still remains around this is what do we do for these data files that that are shared? So the YAML, uh, the, the helper code and all of that, uh, I think is fairly um, manageable. Uh, but the problem really comes in with, with this data files. You know? So if we want to move the hand out uh, of, the, of the repo, you know, there's a lot of data files that the handbook needs that the marketing site also needs. And so what do we do? So you, you've got this dependency that can't travel with you um, and so one of, one of the possible uh, solutions for that is to have a data specific repo potentially. Um, there's already talks that some of the data files might need to be in a private repository going forward. And so you know, the, the theory is that we'll have a data repository for these data files and at build time you'll pull them in um, as part of your build process. Now there's challenges with that in, in the sense of if you change the structure of the data files in, a, in one repo and it's not, you're not updating the code in, in, you know, in, the, in the repos that are reading it, you're having these conflicts or you need to introduce versioning or all of those things. So there's a lot to consider with this as well. Um, there's local development environments, making sure that you have all of these, these things linked in properly. So there's no small task to, to create true separation uh, to the point where we can move the handbook to a separate repo. And as such, I don't, I don't necessarily see us being able to achieve this in the next uh, court, one or two quarters. Um, at best, I, I think we might be able to, to get to, to this point early next year. Um, what, we, what we really want to do from the handbook side is, a, is, a, is get our site on GitLab pages um, because it, you know, it's a great dog footing opportunity for GitLab uh, pages. Um, and it will help us also understand the environment of static sites on GitLab pages and, and be able to help influence the direction of GitLab pages uh, so that it uh, meets the needs of, of static sites and, and contributes to the user journey that we want to create for static site uh, editing and creation on GitLab. And so, yeah, so that's where we, we will likely go, uh, subject to conversation and, and some decision making and stuff. 
um, and solving some hard technical challenges along the way. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the, the resources and time that your team has put in to helping with the help, the www repository? Because I've seen you as uh, <laughs> tremendous uh, collaborators on the, the code, um, consistently helping yeah. uh, the marketing team and the handbook. Yeah, so essentially Chad is, has been pretty much dedicated to, to the handbook project for the last four to five months, I would say. Yeah, um, he's, pipeline he's expert. Been, <laughs> yeah, he, he, I, he, you joke, I actually encouraged him to, to take on the, the, the maintainer training for the, the CI file the, the other day, um, because he spent so much time in, in, in there. Um, you know, he's, he's been focused a lot on the pipelines, caching, how can we improve the repo caching and stuff? I mean, he's gone deep in that. Um, he's been pioneering the mono repo restructuring. Um, we've had Vasili, who's contributed a lot of custom helpers and, and linting and stuff in the repo to help with things like broken links uh, and stuff like that, which isn't just uh, a bit to a benefit of the handbook, but also the overall site because there's cross linking going on all, all the time. Um, and so I, I would say we, we've definitely had a dedic one dedicated engineer uh, on, on this project uh, for the last five, six months. And, and, and we are, we've, we've, I mean, we've made some UX improvements to the handbook that doesn't really uh, reflect on the hand, uh, marketing side, but um, you know, overall, a lot of cleanup and, and stuff and refactorings that's happened has been to the overall benefit of, of the repository. Um, that said, uh, you know, like we've also in, introduced a, a handbook on all process to, to help, you know, you know, when there's pipeline failures or, or broken masters for, for the repo. And sometimes it's related to the handbook, sometimes it's not. And you know, Lauren and, and Brandon has been uh, helping us out with that as well. So I think really between, between the, the, the marketing website team and, and the static side team, it's really been like,